In this tutorial, we'll see some simple structural refactorings in Wrangler. We'll see how to rename a function, a variable, rename a module, and also how we can move functions between modules. OK, let's get started. What we can see here in the example are the files s.erl and c.erl. And you can see that c.erl uses one of the functions from s, uh, not the other way around. These things you can see inside s that we have a, a function called s. We also register a process under the name s. So we've got lots of different uses of the, the atom s. And you'll see that we're able in Wrangler to, make, to disambiguate these. And so if we rename the function, we don't rename the registered process or the module. OK, let's get started. Let's have a look at renaming a variable. And let's click, put our, our cursor on the variable m. m is a bit, a bit terse. Perhaps we'll rename this message. So let's have a look. We go to the refactoring menu. We select rename variable name. And we're prompted at the um, mini buffer there for a new name. And what I'm going to put in is message. Now, perhaps you can see I've made a mistake here. I've, I've used a small m rather than a capital M. Let's see what happens. And you can see that the refactoring has failed. We've got an invalid new variable name. And you can see um, you can see also in the in the Earl output window, you can see what's uh, we're getting some feedback there. But the major feedback we see is is in this mini buffer here. Right, let's we've still got our, our uh, cursor on that variable. Let's now ask to rename variable name and let's call it message. Now let's see what happens. Now we'll return and now we get a choice. We, we can say do we want to preview the refactoring, commit it or cancel it. Remember if we do commit we can always undo at a later stage. Um, so let's, let's for the moment let's say commit and what you can see here is that we have changed the, the variable to message in the um, pattern but also in the, the body of that that receive. Good, so that's looking a bit more comprehensible. Excellent. Now, what should we do next? Let's this time rename the function L. L is perhaps short for loop. So let's have a look at that. So let's um, now I could show you what happens if we if we hit rename variable name, but let's not make another mistake. Let's let's type hit rename function name. If we type loop in the mini buffer. Um, and return, we'll see a number of chart again. Now, what we can do here is let's let's say that we want to preview the changes. Let's see what happens. We'll hit P, and what this does is this uses EDIF, which is a plugin for Emacs, to show the changes. And what we do is using the space bar, we can move between them. So we see first of all that the export list has changed. We were originally exporting L, now we're exporting loop. Um, the second change is that inside S, this is called, it's a symbolic call inside a spawn, and that gets renamed. And then finally, in the, um, in the definition of the function itself, we've renamed it, and it's been renamed in the, um, in the recursive call, in the tail call. So we've got four changes in all. Now what we can do is quit edif, we do that by typing Q, and we're prompted at the, in the mini buffer to quit the edif session, and we'll do, we'll say yes. Now we're in the situation where we have the option to, um, to perform the changes or not. Let's perform them. So let's, let's again, you can see the, the, we're being asked that there. Let's say yes. And now what we're seeing is, in fact, we're seeing in the two windows now, we're seeing the changes to the two, to the two files. We've also got C there, so let's just close that window. We don't really need that. You can see that C is, is, is in that buffer. So now we have um, the loop function. It's exported. Uh, it's spawned there. And we've got, um, we've got it redefined in its definition. So that shows us redefining a function. Let's also redefine the function S here. Um, because what we want to do, again, let's perhaps we'll call the, the S here means server. Let's rename that, rename function name. And let's say S, uh, let's say the new name, 
trip cutting in here is server. Um, now we can preview this and, and see what the changes have been. Let's press pre P down here in the mini buffer. Um, and we, to see the changes, we use the spacebar. You can see now that we're exporting a server function rather than S. And we have renamed the function server here. Now, if we type Q, we can um, quit there. Let's do that. Say Y. Now we have a different message here, and we're getting a different message here because the change to the, the name has not only effect in the file s.l, but it has an effect in other files. So let's say yes and see what happens. What we see now is that we have, we're seeing that the, the file c.l is changed. And if we, whoops, I was in the wrong window there, sorry. If we go to this window and we press, oh, if we go to the edif window and press, you can see here that we've changed a call to s to a call to server. So we have to make changes. We rename a function or rename a module. Those can have an effect across a whole code base. Let's quit that. We we'll quit this edif session. We're prompted to do that. And we're asked, do we want to perform the changes? And let's say yes. So now we see we've got s.l. And if we look in c.l, we call the function s server. Now, a final thing we could do is to rename a module. Um, but you can see here, just to note, that inside server, the registered name of s has not changed, nor has the name of the module s. Now, let's, um, let's finally change the name of the module. And let's see what happens there. So we have a go to the refactoring menu. Choose rename module name. Let's call it um, server. We can do this. Type return, and let's just let's not bother previewing this time. Let's just commit. And you see the module has been re renamed server, and you can see here that now we call the server function inside the server module. So that has shown us a number of different. Uh, different operations we can perform by way of renaming. The final operation I wanted to show you was one where we um, move a function from one module to another. If I put my cursor on the loop function and um, let's say that we want to move a function to another module and we're prompted in the mini buffer for another module name. We could do two things here. We, could, we can choose a module that already exists or we can choose a module that doesn't exist. In that case, the module is created. But let's choose to move it to the, the module C. So let's type C, and let's say we want to, pre uh, want to preview. Um, we can run through the changes. So we see now the export list has changed. We no longer have a um, an export list. Uh, we no longer have loop in the export list. And you can see the body has changed because the loop function has disappeared. Now if we quit that, let's quit this EDF session and let's say we want to we don't want to preview the changes in other files. Let's just let the thing happen. So let's say we want to perform the changes. Yes. And now you see what has happened is that we have the loop function is in the C module now. It's also exported. We put in a separate export list because to make it clear that this function has come from somewhere else, it's possible to, to, um, to put those two lists together if you wish. Inside the module server, you can see that the inside the spawn, we have changed to get this symbolic call to loop has become the call to loop in C rather than to loop in S. So you can see that what we have done here is we have been able to move a function from one module to another. All the change that reflects changes across the code base, actual explicit calls to the function, symbolic calls to the function are all adjusted, as are the export lists. Good. What I will do finally is to show you that we can undo all these changes. So let's undo that change. And what we should see now is that the loop function is now back in the server module. Let's undo the next change. Click yes. 
what we can see is that the module now is called S rather than, so we've got modules S and C. Let's undo the next change. And what we now have is that uh, the function here is called S rather than server. Let's undo the next change. And that should means that the loop function is now called L rather than loop. And then finally, our last change should be to make the message variable be M. So now you can see we've restored things to the state we were in right at the start. So it's always possible if you make a series of changes, you can undo those up to the point where you um, are happy with the changes that have been made. We've also seen that we can preview the changes using edif. And we can preview changes not just for the existing file, but also for all the other files that are affected, if we want to do that. Um, we've seen that if you if you don't pr uh, provide a, a valid variable name um, or don't provide a valid function name, the, right, the refactoring will fail. If also, you can see that if you try to rename a function to a, a, a function that's already defined, that will that will fail as well. So we do a number of checks to make sure that the semantics of your program are preserved so that these are, are real refactorings and not transformations that break your program. Okay, so that's the end for this session. What we'll look at next are some more complicated structural refactorings such as function extraction, generalization, and so on.